Have you ever taken a bite of something so distinct that it stirred your senses and made you wonder about its origins? That's the magic of blue cheese, a cheese that stands apart from the rest with its bold flavor, creamy texture, and striking appearance. But have you ever thought about how this remarkable creation comes to life? How do tiny blue veins in the cheese form? And what makes this delicacy so expensive and sought after? So, in this video, we will dive deep into the world of blue cheese, tracing its roots from ancient history to its modern day craftsmanship. By the end of this video, you will not only understand how blue cheese is made, but you will also appreciate why this unique cheese comes with a hefty price tag. From accident to artistry, blue cheese has a history as rich as its taste. Its origins are often traced back to an accident. Yes, like many of the world's great culinary creations, blue cheese was discovered by chance. Legend has it that blue cheese was born in the caves of Roquefort, France, when a shepherd left behind a loaf of bread and some cheese in a cool, damp cave. Upon returning weeks later, he found his cheese covered in mold. Yet surprisingly, it had developed an extraordinary taste. This was the birth of Roquefort, one of the oldest and most famous blue cheeses. While Roquefort is the most legendary, blue cheeses were also being crafted in various parts of Europe, including Italy and Gorgonzola, and England and Stilton. Each region developed its own variety of blue cheese, using local milk and unique molds that grow in specific environments. Over the centuries, blue cheese transitioned from an accidental discovery to a carefully controlled craft. Today, blue cheese is made across the world, each region contributing its own spin on the process while still maintaining the core, traditional techniques that date back hundreds of years. The art and science of blue cheese making. At its core, blue cheese is made from the same ingredients as most other cheeses, milk, rennet, and salt. However, what sets it apart is the introduction of specific molds, particularly Penicillium rocaforti or Penicillium glaucum, which are responsible for the characteristic blue veins and intense flavors. Let's break down the process step by step. Milk selection and preparation. The journey of blue cheese begins with high quality milk. Traditionally, blue cheese was made from sheep's milk, particularly in Roquefort. But today, it is commonly made from cow's or goat's milk as well. The quality of milk is paramount. Farmers take special care in ensuring the milk is fresh and unadulterated as this will influence the texture and taste of the final product. Once the milk is selected, it is pasteurized to kill any harmful bacteria, ensuring a clean slate for the introduction of the desired cultures and molds. Adding starter cultures and mold spores. After pasteurization, the milk is warmed and bacterial starter cultures are added. These cultures are vital for the fermentation process as they help to acidify the milk and create the ideal conditions for curd formation. Here's where blue cheese takes its unique turn. Mold spores, specifically Penicillium rocheforti or Penicillium glaucum, are introduced into the milk. These molds are responsible for the characteristic blue veins and contribute to the cheese's tangy and earthy flavors. The molds are thoroughly mixed into the milk so that they are evenly distributed throughout the curds as they form. Coagulation and curd formation. Next, rennet, an enzyme, is added to the milk, causing it to coagulate and form curds. The curds are cut into small pieces to allow the whey, which is the liquid portion, to separate from the curds. In the case of blue cheese, the curds are cut into larger pieces compared to other cheeses. This larger curd size helps retain moisture, contributing to the characteristic creaminess of blue cheese draining the whey, and forming the cheese. Once the curds have been cut and sufficiently drained of whey, they are placed into molds. The curds are gently pressed, but unlike other cheeses, they are not pressed too firmly. The idea is to leave small air pockets within the cheese, which will later allow the mold to grow and spread, creating the iconic blue veining. Salting the cheese. At this stage, salt is either mixed directly into the curds or rubbed on the outside of the cheese. Salt is crucial in controlling the growth of bacteria, enhancing flavor, and helping the cheese to mature properly. Blue cheese tends to be salted more heavily than other types of cheese, 
contributing to its bold, sharp flavor. Creating the blue veins. Here's where blue cheese gets its signature appearance. After the cheese has been shaped and salted, it is pierced with long, thin needles or metal rods. This piercing process introduces oxygen into the cheese, allowing the mold to grow and develop its characteristic blue veins. The blue mold needs air to thrive, and the small holes created by the needles provide the perfect environment for it to spread throughout the cheese. Without this step, blue cheese wouldn't be blue. It's a fascinating process. Without the piercing, the molds would remain dormant, and the cheese would have a vastly different flavor and texture, aging and maturing. Once pierced, the cheese is placed in a cool, humid environment to age. Blue cheese typically matures for anywhere from a few weeks to several months, depending on the variety and the desired flavor profile. The caves of Roquefort are naturally ideal for this aging process, maintaining the right balance of temperature and humidity. During the aging process, the blue veins develop further, and the cheese becomes creamier and more flavorful. The longer the cheese is aged, the more intense its flavor becomes. Packaging and distribution. Once the cheese has reached its optimal age, it is carefully packaged and sent out to cheese lovers around the world. Blue cheese is often wrapped in foil to preserve its moisture and protect its delicate texture. From there, it makes its way to specialty shops, gourmet markets, and restaurants, where it is enjoyed by connoisseurs and curious eaters alike. Why is blue cheese so expensive? If you've ever been shocked by the price tag on a wedge of blue cheese, you're not alone. But why is blue cheese so expensive compared to other cheeses? So let's understand this also. Blue cheese requires high quality milk, often sourced from small local farms where the animals are carefully tended to, and this kind of milk is more expensive to produce than mass-produced milk from larger dairy operations. Also, as we have learned, the process of making blue cheese, and we know that it is highly labor-intensive. From the piercing of the cheese to the aging process, each step requires precision and care. Blue cheese must be aged in specific conditions to develop its unique flavor. The caves of Roquefort, for example, are a prime location, but modern facilities must replicate these conditions, which require specialized equipment and storage space. Unlike some cheeses that can be mass produced, many varieties of blue cheese are made in small batches using traditional techniques. This limited production results in a higher price point as demand often outweighs supply. The value of blue cheese. Blue cheese is more than just a food. It's a symbol of tradition, craftsmanship, and patience. When you consider the time, effort, and expertise that goes into every wheel of blue cheese, the price begins to make sense. So the next time you savor a bite of blue cheese, take a moment to appreciate the complex journey it's taken to reach your plate. Each bite tells a story of history, art, and science, a story that's worth every penny.